Next week, we're hosting a retreat in the Atlas Mountains in Morocco for 40 members of our Wise Humanity community of students and clients. They actually suggested the topic, feeling not good enough. So I thought I'd post a blog about it. Now, this kind of self-doubt, not feeling enough or something, is very common. It can be deep-rooted in our upbringing, but it's also part of everyone's personal growth journey. A certain level of self-doubt is a great companion. It shows us that there's so much more to learn, and it, it can also lead us to gather more people and resources to help towards our goals. However, self-doubt can grow into a haunting beast that completely paralyzes us. Not only does it throw in our face all the areas of our personal or technical capabilities where we feel inadequate, but it can also make us feel not good enough for anything, for our dreams, our job, our love relationship, parenting, or even just the next um, task in our to-do list. Just not enough. One of our students actually coined the term not enoughism. The good news is that if you find yourself stuck in the story of not enoughism, just remember that it's only a story, a narrative. And there are various ways out of it. I'm going to go through a few in this blog and see if any of these alternative narratives resonate with you. Now, when I need to confute an unhelpful narrative, I love to use paradoxes. And here's an anecdote coming from a conversation between Elizabeth, the other co-founder of Was Humanity, and her dad when she was little. She shared her fear of not being good enough to fulfill her potential. To which her dad replied, don't worry, nobody ever does. The force is strong with this mental map. I've spent a few minutes thinking of examples of people who really fulfill their potential completely and I couldn't think of anyone not one think of a great inspiring leader like Gandhi or Mandela for example did they fulfill their potential they did amazing things but couldn't they have achieved even more I can imagine Gandhi felt that he failed when he saw the violence of the Indian partition or Mandela could have felt that he failed to create a political party that could withstand corrupt influences. Did they really fulfill their whole potential? Nobody does, ever. How powerful is this mental map? We set the bar so high by design that we should just drop no enoughism altogether. What does good enough even mean? Here's another paradox that I find inspiring. How will I know that I've been enough? By achieving a certain objective. If that's the case, then I'm deceiving myself. Can I really take personal individual credit even just for my contributions towards achieving a goal? Say I'm an entrepreneur who's growing a business or a marketing director who's leading the, a new company strategy. I may as well succeed in my goals, but what about all the people who enabled me? And it's not only my co-workers who contributed to the same goal. What about those who enabled my contribution, all the people who gave me an education, those who advised me, those who inspired me, whether intentionally or randomly, my clients who believed in me, the whole system around me that enabled my success. And the list goes on forever. There's no individual achievement ever. If we think we've achieved something just by ourselves, we're delusional. It's great to realize I'm growing my business or making more customers happy. It's a fantastic, fulfilling feeling, and by all means, may I rejoice and be energized by it. However, if I define myself by this success and I inflate my ego, I'm deceiving myself. I've never been alone on this successful journey. The point I'm trying to make here is that being enough is a delusional objective. Even when I've actually been enough and I've achieved what I wanted, I've only played a part in a much bigger play enabled by the whole system around me. It's the system that was enough. So what is happening when I don't feel enough is I'm thinking that I'll have to deliver the whole contribution by, by myself unaided. That I have to achieve the goal but just by myself. I'm putting the whole burden upon myself in isolation. 
but it's both an emotional and logical mistake because it'll be the whole system I'm part of that will or will not deliver the final outcome, not just me. So if I think of being enough that way, I'll never be enough because I'll never be the whole system. And finally, another powerful mental map that can lead me out of not enoughism is to realize that I'm always enough, just the opposite. I'm always enough. I'm enough for anything I've been put in this world for. It's almost by definition. I can't not be enough for what I've been put in this world for. Think about it. I can't not be enough for what I've been put in this world for. So if I use higher, tougher standards to measure how good I am, it's not the task that I'm trying to achieve that is making me feel not enough. It's my arbitrary standards. And I repeat this as well. It's not the task. It's not my goal. It's my arbitrary standards that make me feel not enough. And it's really good homework to explore where those arbitrary standards came from and how I can replace them with a more empowering story about myself. And in the meantime, I can let go of the concept of being enough altogether. I don't even need to tell myself that I'm enough. I'm just right. Right for what I've been put in this world for. What I've been put in this world for is defined by who I am, so I can't not be right for it. So in conclusion, just drop not enoughism altogether. It's not serving you. Nobody's ever good enough because it's the system that makes things happen, not the individual in isolation. And nobody's ever not good enough because you can't not be enough for what you've been put in this world for. You can obviously continue on your personal growth journey because you're driven by being the best of, version of yourself and by making your best impact in the world. But you'll do that from a place of expansion, not from a place of neediness, not from a place of lacking something in order to be enough. Okay, one last word. I thought I'd post about the feeling of not being enough because it's the theme of next week's retreat. And I've reused a lot of what I wrote in another blog over two years ago. I could have changed it more, or I could have written an entirely new blog about it. But you know what? I thought it was good enough. 